Okay, this is an incident we're getting, a report we're getting of an incident that took place on Thursday morning in Canada. An Indian origin Sikh man described as a higher level figure in the organized crime scene in Canada and his 11-year-old son was shot and killed according to Edmonton police. Hardeep, Harpreet Singh Uppal and his son, they were both in a car. They were gunned down outside a gas station. They were actually with a third person who sustained injuries but did not die. Uh, he was a friend of the son who was in the car. This was a brazen daytime shooting. Now the, copy, the cops have called this incident sick and twisted. This is an escalation of gang violence we've seen time and time again in the city of Edmonton in Canada. Now we're going to bring you more context on the story but very quickly before we do that, take a look at how officials are responding. It's located inside that burnt vehicle and no injuries have been reported as a result of the fire at this time. Um, I can tell you that EPS homicide section is now leading the investigation and uh, determined that this was a targeted, what we would call a targeted shooting event. And I think later on we'll take a minute to just explain a little bit more about what, that, what we mean by that. The autopsies have been scheduled for Monday and Tuesday of next week. And, and as always, we'll provide updates on the investigation uh, as well as confirmation of both cause and manner of their deaths after those autopsies. Okay, my colleague Abhishek is with us right now to bring us more context. Abhishek, this is an incident that took place in southeast Edmonton, as we're telling our audiences. One of the stories we've been focusing on on the past, for context for this, is the gang violence we've seen take place again and again in these regions. Can you bring us more context and tell us about the details of this incident? Uh, well, we have seen uh, you know, gang violence uh, or organized crime, gun violence, actually picking up pace in the last couple of years. And... Uh, in the case of Hardeep Singh Major that we were talking earlier, there was also this angle that uh, many agencies or experts have pointed out that that could have been a part of this organized crime setup that is taking place in Canada these days. But the latest killing that we are talking about, Kupal, he himself was uh, involved in many criminal activities. He was a very senior member of one of the many gangs that are operating in the area. And uh, he was also facing charges related to cocaine possession and trafficking as well as illegal possession of body armor. And he was also charged with assault with a weapon and unauthorized possession of a firearm in relation to a case from, uh, from March 2021. And there was an assassination attempt on his on him uh, earlier, uh, way back in 2021 also. So uh, the killing, which also involved tragically his 11-year-old son, uh, seems to be linked to the gang war rivalry happening in Canada where Multiple killings have taken place in uh, some parts in Toronto, some in British Columbia also. And uh, the, the killing that has happened of Uppal, which is still under investigation, uh, is prima facie being linked to some, some earlier crime incidences uh, that has taken place in Canada. Okay, Abhishek, can I actually ask you to stay with us? We're moving to a related story. We'll come over to you for details. Okay, these were big international developments over the weekend. On Friday, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau once again raising the issue of the killing of the Khalistani separatist Hardeep Singh Nijjar. He has once again alleged that Indian agents were involved. Do you remember Trudeau first made this set of statements in September? In September, he brought up in Canadian Parliament that Hardeep Singh Nijjar, according to him, had been killed by and because of the involvement of Indian agencies. Remember, what we do know is that Nijar was shot dead in broad daylight in June itself. This is outside the Gurudwara that he ran. Now, Canada has claimed since that it shared information with India about this incident. India has continued to say that it has not received or had not received any such information about India's purported role. Now, moving on. In the last few months, a diplomatic crisis of sorts has evolved after Canadian, Can Canada recalled 40 of its diplomats and it said that India's treatment towards it was against the Vienna Convention. Now, a top government source has responded to this by saying that it is not, in fact, against the Vienna Convention. We're going to bring you all of the latest developments on this story, but first take a look at what the Canadian Prime Minister had to say on Friday. We reached out to India to ask them to work with us on getting to the bottom of this matter. And India's response is to kick out a whole bunch of Canadian diplomats by violating their rights under the Vienna Convention. 
That is of concern to countries around the world. We have tried to work constructively and positively with India, and we will continue to. And that means continuing to work with uh, Indian government diplomats. This is not a fight we want to be having right now. Okay, my colleague Abhishek Jha is with us right now. Abhishek, we just played out for our audiences what it is that the Canadian leader had to say. I just want to ask you, on Friday itself, we know the United States Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, had once again advised India to coordinate with Canada in this entire investigation. Uh, we also have evidence to believe that it is the United States that originally shared the intel information with Canada that led Canada to make that statement. Behind the scenes, can you tell our audiences what role is the United States playing in this to navigate for both of the countries? Well, uh, recently when uh, uh, this uh, 2 plus 2 dialogue in India was happening and uh, we did ask about uh, whether there was some intelligence sharing or whether there was some discussion that happened on the India-Canada bilateral row because USA has apparently shared some intelligence on the basis of which those allegations were made by Canadian Prime Minister against Indian agencies. Uh, the answer was that there was uh, nothing particular that was talked right now and uh, India has been consistent with its partners in having conversations regarding such issues. So there was no clarity whether uh, the discussion uh, has taken as, uh, you know, recently as the 2 plus 2 dialogue. But we know that uh, USA has been very insistent upon India's cooperation in the investigation of Ardit Singh Major scaling, which India has said that it will cooperate only on the basis of the evidences or the proofs that would be provided by the Canadian authorities, which it seems right now has not been provided yet. And Indian side is still waiting. So on, on that context, uh, what kind of cooperation Canadian Prime Minister is expecting from India, that remains a mystery. Also, the, the, the entire contradiction that he is trying to evoke uh, on the basis of Vienna Convention is something that, that doesn't seem to be very much true because India had called for a parity in rank and strength of number of diplomats present uh, between the two sides. And uh, going by the Vienna Convention, uh, that is now being maintained. If India and Canada had any other bilateral agreement, uh, other than the Vienna Convention, that would allow any extra number of diplomats to be present in a uh, host country. That would have been a different case. But since the two sides didn't have any such arrangement or any agreement, so going by Vienna Convention, number of diplomats parity is something that any country can seek. And this is what happened uh, in the case of India, where India has alleged that there are, uh, you know, duties uh, that were beyond the mandate of a diplomat, that these diplomats were involved and. Uh, some of these evidences may come soon in the public domain. This is what Ajay Shankar, our external affairs minister, has also hinted. So in that context, these diplomats were uh, asked to leave. They were not expelled uh, to, to, to seek the rank uh, and uh, the strength parity between the two sides. So in, in that context, these, these things have happened. And the allegation which has created this kind of furor and, uh, between the two sides' diplomatic relations, that needs to be substantiated by the Canadian Prime Minister. This is what India's uh, stance has been. Okay, Abhishek, thank you for that context.